Check. Check.
Okay, good afternoon to all of you. So, if my AV is okay, any background disturbance? Visible, visible, audible. Audio, audio. Audible, okay. Any disturbance is there, you can tell me. Okay, fine. So let us uh, start uh, the today's class. Okay, till this point, uh, I think uh, you are able to view this uh, slide here. Till this point, I have explained it regarding this uh, economical operation, what do you mean by optimal operation, power flow, etc. So the optimal system operation, so we are considering the objective function, the objective function is to minimize the total generating cost or total production cost such a way that it has to meet the load demand. It has to meet the load demand PD. Understood? So with this pictorial representation, I said C1 is the cost of generation at plant one. C2 is the cost of generation at plant 2, etc. And what is P1? Is the real power generation at plant P1 and real power generation at plant P2, etc. So with this one, I have given it uh, some equations. So what is the total cost, etc. and all those things I have given it, this one, isn't it? Now what is the objective function? This is the objective function. What is CT here? It is a total production cost. So total production cost here, CT, or total generating cost, CT, is equal to how to find out uh, what is the total generating cost is equal to sum of all the individual generating cost, sum of all these generating, individual generating cost, that is C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus etc. CN is the total generating cost. Understood? So with that one, so the objective function is this one. So total cost is equal to CI, where I is varied from one to number of generating stations. Suppose if there are three generating stations, then this will be C1 plus C2 plus C3. Fine. Okay. This is the total production cost. This is your objective function. So whenever you want to achieve your goal, that is your objective function, you have to sacrifice some of the things, isn't it? So those sacrifices are nothing but here, the constraints. So in order to achieve this objective function, that is in order to achieve minimum total generating cost, so it has to meet the load demand. That is the only one constraint we are considering in this case study. There are different constraints that are going to come into picture. Like what are the, apart from this load demand, the other constraints that is going to come into picture are you are generating limits. That means limits on the generation. Suppose if plant one is there, so it should produce minimum say so and so megawatt, and it cannot exceed so and so megawatt. So minimum generation and maximum limits will be there on generation. This is another constraints. So that we will see that one later. Fine. So with this one, this is the objective function such a way that subject to the constraint. The total PD is your total load demand is equal to total real power generation, isn't it? So that means in the pictorial representation I have shown, this is the total load demand, PD. So this PD has to meet such a way that P1 plus P2 plus P3, etc. PNG is equal to PD. Total generation is equal to total load because in this case, we are neglecting losses. So neglecting losses, we are dealing it with. So if you neglect it, so that is the equation we are going to get. So this is your objective function subjected to where I is varied from 1 to G. 
NG number of generators. If three generators are there, then this becomes P1 plus P2 plus P3 is equal to PD. This is the constraint it has to satisfy. There are different types of constraints are there in optimization problem. I think you might have studied in uh, mathematics optimization problem that is linear programming problem, etc. Isn't it? So if you have studied, then the type of constraints are equal constraints, that is equality constraints, or inequality constraints will be there. Inequality constraints are maybe greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, isn't it? So here we are considering subject to the constraint, equality constraint, we are considering it. So that is summation of PA is equal to PD, clear? So this is what we have to achieve it to in order to achieve this goal such a way that total generation must be equal to total load demand so with this objective function and the constraint so let us move on here now as i said already i have indicated what is cai is the production cost of ith plant what is ct is total production cost here production means what generation that you should remember pi means what it is generation of your ith plant pd total load demand NG is number of dispatchable generators, total number of dispatchable generators. So this is the thing we are going to solve. So that means we are going to get some solution for this one, for this optimization problem. This is known as your mathematical model, mathematical modeling for your optimal operation. Mathematical modeling for optimal operation means you should say, what is the objective function? What are the constraints? So in this case, the objective function is to minimize the total production cost and subjected to the constraint that total generation is equal to total load demand. Okay. And next, coming back to now, a typical approach to augment the constraints into the objective function by using Lagrangian multiplier. So whenever we are, we have to consider these constraints into our objective function, into our objective function. Now, how to integrate this constraint? Only one constraint, equality constraint, we are considering integrate into this objective function. So if you want to integrate that one into your objective function, that means you have to add that one into your objective function. So we are going by your Lagrangian multiplier method. There is one method, there are so many methods are there. But here we will be dealing it with only Lagrangian multiplier. So what is this Lagrangian multiplier? So let us see how to apply it. So therefore Lagrangian multiplier is denoted by, this is your Lagrangian multiplier is equal to total cost. This is your objective function. This is your objective function plus the constraints, plus the constraints, which is multiplied with your Lagrangian multiplier lambda this lambda is known as your lagrangian multiplier understood so this is the, nothing but your lagrangian equation is equal to total cost plus the constraints so can these constraints must be multiplied with your lagrangian multiplier lambda please remember here in this case lambda is your lagrangian multiplier what is the constraint this is your constraint isn't it so, because you can see there in the previous slide I've shown, this is your constraint. So, how I'm going to, I'm going to take this PD on this side. So, it will become summation of PI minus PD. That is your constraint. So, the R PD minus of this one. Either this way PI minus PD or PD minus of this one, you can consider. Clear? So, this constraint, equality constraint is multiplied with your Lagrangian multiplied. So, this is how you are going to augment the constraints into the objective function using your Lagrangian multiplier. So objective function plus the constraints. The constraint must be multiplied with your Lagrangian multiplier. Clear, that is your Lagrangian equation, phi. This is your equation phi we got. Now how to get the solution of this one? So that is the thing. First thing is objective function constraint. Now how we are going to augment the constraint into the object, objective function using your Lagrangian multiplier. Okay, the minimum of this constraint, this is your constraint function. This is your constraint function is found by taking partial derivatives of the 
function partial derivatives of the function with respect to variable pi and equating it to zero you see it here the minimum this is your constrained function lagrangian function known as lagrangian function so this constriction constrained function is found by taking the partial derivative of this lagrangian equation with respect to pi understood so let us take first one so let us take the do l do l actually this is l lagrangian some of some of the books they will use l to do pi is equal to 0 is the first one understood and the second one is the second one is with respect to your lambda it is with respect to lambda these are the conditions so minimum of this equation 5 is found by taking partial derivative of function pi and equating to 0 this is the one take partial derivative of this one with respect to pi equated to 0 and take partial derivative of this one with respect to, to lambda that is lagrangian multiplier and equate it to 0 these two equation please remember this one any constrained lagrangian function you have to take the partial derivative with respect to pi and partial derivative with respect to lagrangian multiplier delta sorry lambda now first this is known as your equation 6 and this is your equation 7 now taking lagrange partial derivative of this equation with respect to pi what you are going to get here because ct is what total production cost so total production cost means what how we are going to get this one total production cost is equal to you know that one isn't it so this is a variable production cost varies isn't it it is a variable it is not a constant ct because as the demand varies, as the demand varies, obviously generation is also going to vary. So if the generation varies, obviously the cost of generation is also going to vary. So therefore, the total cost of generation is also going to be varied. So here CT is not a constant, it is a variable. So therefore, taking this partial derivative of this CT with respect to PI plus lambda, okay. PD is a constant, load demand is constant. Now here we have kept it constant here. Zero minus, and this is a summation with respect to PI only. If you have only one with respect to one, it will be P1. So it is a partial derivative with respect to P1 will be, it is one only. So if you are taking partial derivative with respect to P2, then this becomes P2 only. So then also it will be one only, clear? So just take the partial derivative of equation 5 with respect to pi. So this is the equation you are going to get. Fine. So from this equation, it is nothing but this part is nothing but minus lambda. Or lambda is equal to dou c2 to dou pi. So this is the equation. This is the resultant equation. Is it clear till this point? So because this is very, very important uh, thing, which we are going to get it. So first is objective function, constraint, augment the constraint into objective function by using Lagrangian multiplier. Then the resultant equation Lagrangian function must be taken partial derivative with respect to PI and you will get this equation. This partial derivative still we have not yet taken. Okay, so only equation six I am explaining. So remember this one, dou CT to dou PI is equal to lambda. This is the thing we are having it. Now, since CT is equal to the sum of all the individual cost of generation, CT is equal to C1 plus C2, et cetera, plus CNG, isn't it? So therefore, dou CT by dou PI, this is the total cost. So how to get dou CT to dou PI? You're going to get this DC1 or DCI by DPI, DCI by DPI, where I is varied from one to NG, understood? So because of this one, so then it will be dou CT to dou PI is equal to DCI by DPI in turn is equal to lambda. Only this term, we are getting it, etc. because we know that total cost is equal to, it is the sum of individual cost. So therefore, this can also be written as DCI by DPI. Understood? So is equal to lambda. So now from this one, the condition for, what is the condition for optimal dispatch? or optimum dispatch. 
so therefore you can see the condition for optimal dispatch is dci by dpi is equal to lambda is a condition for maximum sorry optimum dispatch so this lambda is known as incremental fuel cost incremental fuel cost understood so this incremental fuel cost lambda here it is like we have started with the lagrangian multiplier isn't it lambda so this lagrangian multiplier will be become incremental fuel cost in the solution clear now onwards we will call this one as a incremental fuel cost is equal to dci by dpi now i am going to expand this one that means if you have i is equal to 1 to ng i am going to expand this one so that's what i said dci by dpi is known as incremental fuel cost of your ith generator and what is the unit of this incremental fuel cost is rupees per megawatt hour what is the total production cost unit is rupees per hour rupees per hour but for incremental when you take the derivative of your cost function whatever you are getting it is known as incremental fuel cost the unit will be rupees per megawatt hour so please remember what is incremental fuel cost is equal to lambda is equal to dci by dpi so this can also be written as when i is equal to 1 so it is dc1 by dpgi is equal to lambda similarly when i is equal to 2 dc2 by dpg2 is equal to lambda so from that equation we can write like dc1 to dpg1 in turn is equal to dc2 is equal to dpg in turn is equal to dc3 by dpg3 etc is equal to dcng to dpng is equal to lambda clear why because from equation 8 when i is equal to 1 this equation becomes dc1 by dp1 is equal to lambda okay fine what when i is equal to 2 it becomes dc2 by dp2 is equal to lambda so in these two equation lambda is common so that's why i am equating this one dc1 dpg1 to equal to dc2 by dpg2 etc like that you will be going to get lambda so this is the important equation you should remember so this is the economic dispatch condition for optimal dispatch this is the condition for optimal dispatch what is the condition for optimal dispatch is this one this one only we have expanded so here this is the condition for optimal dispatch neglecting losses neglecting losses and generator limits please remember that one neglecting generator limits as well as transmission losses the condition for optimal dispatch is dci by dpi is equal to lambda that is nothing but for individual generators if you are taking dc1 to dpg1 is equal to dc2 by dpg2 etc is equal to lambda hope you have understood this one till this point any doubts till this point okay hope you don't have any doubts till this point you understood so optimal dispatch condition for optimal dispatch what is the objective function what is the constraint the type of constraint we have considered is only the equality constraint this is our case one where transmission losses are neglected and limits on generators are neglected please remember this equation with this this equation okay then these two equations you should remember this quadratic equation i have given earlier when i was explaining about this one quadratic equation i have given it so that equation you should remember this one equation 1 and 2 you should remember and condition for optimal dispatch you should remember this is a quadratic equation then incremental fuel cost so how to get incremental fuel cost what is the incremental fuel cost is denoted by lambda that is equal to dci by dpi dci by dpi clear 
so that means what how to get incremental fuel cost from the cost equation take dci to dpi so you will get a one more equation so that is your incremental fuel cost so this is your derivative you have taken already i have explained it isn't it so when you take derivative of this cost equation so whatever the resultant equation you are getting it that is nothing but because we have derived it isn't it dci by dpgi is equal to lambda is nothing but your incremental fuel cost and what is the significance of this incremental fuel cost is it will give this incremental fuel cost gives a measure of how costly how costly it will be to produce next increment of power I think it got disconnected. Okay, now again I connected. So the incremental fuel cost curve is a measure of how costly it will be to produce the next increment of power. So that that is the significance or importance of your incremental cost. As I quoted yesterday, example, 200 megawatts you are it is generating. Suppose if you want to generate 210 megawatt, so what is the additional power you have to generate? It's at 10 megawatt. So to generate this 10 megawatt, what is the cost involved? So that cost involved in to generate that 10 megawatt is known as your incremental cost or because this incremental cost depends on fuel. So therefore it is also known as incremental fuel cost. So these are the things you should remember. Now let us solve one numerical problem based on this case one. That means neglecting transmission losses and generator limits so let us obtain the optimal dispatch using this condition okay again for your reference okay before moving on to the second one let us take the second one let us take what is that second one the constraint function you have to take partial derivative with respect to lambda and equate it to zero isn't it what is the constraint function for your understanding again i have repeated the same equation phi here this is your constraint function first we analyze by taking partial derivative of this function with respect to pi that is equation six now we are to analyze it by taking with respect to lambda then we have to analyze it okay so as per equation seven this is the equation seven okay now when you take with respect to lambda what happens with respect to lambda is there any lambda available in ct is there any lambda values available in ct that is total generating cost no so therefore this term will be zero. So with respect to lambda means lambda coefficient will be PD minus sum of this term is equal to zero. Isn't it? Equal to zero we have to take. So that means what is the derivative, partial derivative of this equation with respect to lambda? So this entire term equals to zero or summation of PA is equal to PD. Already we have seen this itself is your constraint. This itself is your constraint isn't it pi sum of pi is equal to pd anyway that i given different equation over there here i am giving it a different number pi because we have derived again to prove that it is uh, total generation is equal to total load demand now what is the equation two this is your solution equation two i told you know how we got this equation two by taking the derivative of your cost function equation one so this is nothing but your incremental fuel cost, isn't it? So now from this equation, from this equation two, isn't it? So PGI is there. So what is PGI is equal to? What is PGI is equal to? Lambda minus beta i, lambda minus beta i divided by two gamma i, isn't it? So instead of PGI, I have taken it for ith generator only. That is nothing but PI or PGI, it is one and the same. What is PGI? Real power generation at ith bus. What is PI? It is also nothing but real power generation at ith bus. Fine. So from this equation, you are going to get 
the generation equation lambda minus beta i by 2 gamma i please remember this equation is very very important in your economic operation uh, execution in pss lab remember this one from this one the lambda value you have to assume so that's why please remember this equation all are important but some of the equations are very very important because without this one you cannot run the package justification you have to give package you are giving the input you are getting the output result but you have to justify the results for that purpose please remember this equation clear hope you understood so whatever this equation is called your coordination equation is called as coordination equation now substitute this 9 in equation a substitute 9 in a understood so if you substitute that 9 in a so what that means pi is replaced with lambda minus beta i by 2 gamma i so this is what we are going to get that is equation 10 because we we'll, we don't have only i generator we will be having several generators so therefore that equation is equal to this one 10th equation now from this one just i am simplifying and segregating the terms here you can see here segregating the terms so gamma sorry lambda by 2 gamma i i'm separating it minus beta i by 2 gamma i that term i am separating i am rewriting the equation is equal to pd okay now for that you can see here pd and i am taking this term on on to rhs side okay fine because lambda is your incremental pl cost so there is no suffix i here so it is a constant here isn't it so that i am taking it outside that lambda value i am taking it outside so therefore lambda is equal to the whole term divided by this term without lambda so one over one over one right understood hope you understood this one i'll show you so i am taking it this is a lambda which is not a variable so i am taking it outside of the summation so therefore lambda is equal to the entire term divided by this portion this portion this portion is there because lambda i have taken it outside so from this equation lambda is equal to the entire thing divided by this one this should hope you understood this one and one more thing here there is a correction here this should be yes okay this should be plus this is the correction you can make it now hope you understood this one equation lambda is equal to this one so how to determine generation remember this equation how to determine the incremental pl cost lambda remember this one clear yeah. so with this one so this is the theory part so let us take uh, the numerical here okay substituting equation 9 this value in the optimal scheduling generator so we will get optimal scheduling lambda in equation 9 this value of lambda is there no this is a lambda substitute it here so we will get the optimal scheduling substitute equation 11 in 9 that is lambda value here beta i gamma i are your constants is known from the given cost equations from the given cost equations so you can find out what is the generation at i plus clear so that means you are going to get the optimal scheduling of generator by substituting this value of lambda here now take let us take this numerical problem first read the problem the operating cost of two plants c1 and c2 operating cost that is nothing but c1 c2 in rupees per hour the cost is rupees per hour incremental pl cost unit is rupees per megawatt hour please remember the units so the cost of two plants c1 c2 in rupees per hour of two generating units each of 
100 megawatt rating of a thermal plants or these are the cost equations that means there are two plants understood and the rating of each plant is 100 megawatt the rating of each plant is 100 megawatt and what is the cost operating cost of these two plants and obviously operating cost will be given in the form of equation and they are given it here so that is ct ct is equal to okay if i am having that equation i can show it to you here okay ct is equal to quadratic equation we are considered what is that one we are considered ai pgi square plus bi into pgi plus ci this is the sum of the textbooks uses ai bi ci some of the textbooks uses the other things that is alpha pgi square plus beta pgi plus gamma in our explanation we have considered this one alpha beta gamma understood so therefore this is the quadratic equation that has been given here you see this is a quadratic equation in reverse way see always there we are considered ax square plus bx plus c form but here it is in reverse way but it is a still it is a quadratic equation now what is the question find the optimal generation of two units for a total load demand of 180 megawatt and the corresponding cost and that means so how much generation the plant one has to produce how much generation the plant two has to produce and what is the individual cost of generation this is what the first question it says understood so first let us focus on the first question so find the optimal generation so if you want to find the optimal generation so what you should have the incremental fuel cost so for that one how to get incremental fuel cost incremental fuel cost how you are going to get put it in a chat box or you can unmute and you can tell how to get incremental fuel cost wake up wake up Okay, Shanti Prasad has given uh, the answer. Others, please wake up if you are sleeping. Come on, Saksham Sharma. Mohan Kumar, are you there? Mohan Kumar. Are you there? Okay, Shanti Prasad Jain has given uh, the right answer here. So, Tushar has given the answer. That's what all this time I have stressed it. People should keep it. Okay, Sushumna has given an answer. Taking partial derivative. All so three people have given the answer, Tushar, Santipasad, and Sushumna. So taking differentiate, that is differentiate the equations with respect to P. Yeah, that is the right answer. So to get incremental fuel cost. This cost equation you have to differentiate with respect to the generation. So therefore, differentiate this DC1 with respect to DPG1 generation. And this cost 2 equation, that is a C2, DC2 with respect to DPG2. The resultant equations are your incremental PL cost. Okay. So please, uh, this is what you should remember. Most of the people, this is the easiest chapter. You should remember this one compared to the model one and two because a lot of equations are involved. So here, simple equations you have to follow. So differentiate this one. Now you see the first cost equation is the solution I am trying to solve. 
So differentiate this one with respect to PG1. What you are going to get? 120 is a constant, so that will not exist. So with respect to PG1, it remains 0.4. Okay, so sorry. I have written it in. So this is 40. See here. Then here, differentiation of with respect to PG1, it becomes 2 PG1. 2 into 0.2 is 0.4 PG1. So no need to explain anything. So here, this is your this thing, isn't it? And the differentiation of this one is this one. I have written it here. Hope you understood this one. Clear. Yeah. So in the order, I have written it instead of putting this one. So 0.4 PG1 plus 40 is the answer we got. It. Similarly, differentiate the second cost equation. DC2 with respect to PG2, corresponding PG2, not with respect to PG1, corresponding generation only, you have to take. So what you are going to get, now here you see 0.25 PG2, that means 2 PG2, 2 PG2 into 0.25, that becomes 0.5 PG2. And 30 PG2 becomes 30. And this is a constant, there is no PG term here. So obviously will not exist. The unit will be rupees per megawatt hour in both the cases. So this is your incremental fuel cost. And this incremental fuel cost is represented by what? Lambda. This incremental fuel cost, DC1 to DPG1, this equal to lambda. Isn't it? Now, after getting this incremental fuel cost, now what is the total load demand that has been given? 180. So therefore, there are two plants. Generation is equal to load. That is the one equation I have given it. Generation is equal to load, neglecting losses. Because here in this numerical, no losses has been given here. So therefore, total generation is equal to total load demand. So therefore, PG1 plus PG2 is equal to your total load demand. This is another equation I have given it. Equation A, if you remember. So what is PD total load demand? That is 180. PG1 plus PG2 is equal to 180. Here. So this is what we are having. These are the two equations. And PG1 plus PG2 is equal to 180 megawatt. That has been given. Now next. Now for economic dispatch, what is the condition? That is for optimal dispatch, the condition is all the incremental fuel cost equal here to equate it. That is, there are two plants. So DC1 to DPG1 equal to DC2 to DPG2. That is in turn is equal to your lambda. This is your condition for optimal dispatch or economic dispatch. Isn't it? So in this one, what is DC1 to DPG1 equations we got? What is that equation? This is the equation we got in the previous slide. Is equal to DC2 to DPG2. This is the equation we got. See, this is DC1 equal to DC2 to DPG2. So equate these two equations. That's what I am doing it here. Understood. As per the condition for economic dispatch, so the incremental fuel cost must be equated. Now here PG2, I am going to replace it. So how, how I am going to replace it? The PG2 from this equation, what is PG2 is equal to 180 minus PG1 from this equation, what is PG2 is equal to 180 minus PG1. So that I am going to replace it in this equation. So here you see same equation, only thing is PG2 I have replaced with 180 minus PG1. Now we see only one unknown is here in this whole equation PG1. Solve for PG1. Solve for PG1 here. So the resultant value will be 88.89 megawatt. Units are very important. So solve this one. That is solve for PG1. So you will get PG1 is equal to 88.89 megawatt. Clear? Now how to get PG2? Can anyone tell? This is the generation. This is the optimal generation for PG1. What is the generation under optimal condition for generator 2? How to get? What is the value? OK. 
Okay. Abhishek has given the answer. Okay, fine. Value also he has given. How to get PG2 now? Generation at generator 2 or plant 2. Sushumna also has given the answer. Others, please wake up. You would have had nice lunch. Maybe people may be sleeping. Yes. Yeah, you can tell me. How to get PG2? Answers I'm getting it, but I want answers from more people. Tushar has given. So there is an equation called PG1 plus PG2 is equal to total load demand, isn't it? So in that one, PD is known, PG1 is known, substitute it, so you'll get PG2. So that is equal to 91.11. That means here in this equation. In this equation, you know this equation. Now you got the value of PG1 there, 88 point uh, something you got. That you substitute, so you'll get PG2. That's a simple. So you will get PG2 as 91.11 megawatt. So this is your economic scheduling. That is, this is your optimal generation. Why, how you say it is optimal generation? Because you applied optimal condition or condition for optimal dispatch you applied and you got these values. Okay, now what is the cost? What is the cost of producing this much power? What is the cost of producing this much power? That is the next thing. How to calculate? Can anyone tell? What is the cost of generation? That means to produce 88.89 megawatt of generation, what is the cost? How to get? How to calculate? Cost of generation. Come on, cost of generation. I think uh, if you are copying it on a notebook while I am explaining it, so it will be helpful for you. So that's why I insisted always keep a notebook there. And when I am explaining, whenever I'm saying important thing, so you should note down. Anyway, I will be sharing it, but that will become too late. Isn't it? So instantaneously you should come out with the answers. How to find out the cost of this generation? Anyone? Sushumna has given the answer. Let me check it. What is that answer? Is the values of Okay, answer is almost right. Not almost, it is right. Abhishek, Kushar, Shanti Prasad, Shashank, are you there? Shashank, are you there? It's very simple. It is a can see there. Okay, let me wait. See, I can complete this problem within two, three minutes and I can go for next topic. But I want you people to understand each step so that you should not have any confusion here. So now you see how to get this cost. So you are going to get this cost from the cost equations. How to represent the cost equations? Quadratic equation. Cost functions are represented by quadratic equation, isn't it? Now you see, these are the 
cost function or a cost equation in terms of quadratic equation that has been given c1 and c2 what is c1 is the cost of the plant one production or c2 is generating cost of plant two so how to get in this equation now you got the value of pg1 under this condition under optimal condition you got pg1 value substitute pg1 so you will get the corresponding cost understood similarly in this equation you substitute pg2 so you will get c2 so that is the thing you have to do it here pg1 pg2 you got substitute these values in the cost equation that is in the cost quadratic equation so you will get the cost okay that is different uh, thing okay i will explain that uh, i will be showing it can you find out the values there because i am not uh, getting it here 75.56 what is this okay anyway before uh, going to that on that procedure i have explained it now so let me complete now time is almost up so let me complete this one so just wait for it start at 10 minutes i will take 5 minutes i will take value of dc1 to dpg1 dc1 to dpg1 already we have done no that incremental fuel cost okay now therefore dc1 to dpg1 what is the equation we got 0.4 pg1 plus 40 is equal to lambda this is what we got it now pg1 you know from this equation it is not the cost you are going to get what is the value of incremental fuel cost incremental fuel cost is different the cost of generation is different please remember incremental fuel cost is different cost of generation is different that is fuel cost of generation is different incremental fuel cost of generation is different okay fine so here we are all able to find out the lambda value what is lambda the incremental fuel cost so that is equal to pg1 you got so that value is substituted so you will get the lambda is equal to how much you are going to get that is 75.56 this is the value given by abhishek sharma so this is the lambda this is not the cost of generation this is the incremental fuel cost now what about incremental fuel cost i have taken for plant 1 but what about plant 2 what about plant 2 you will also you will get the same answer if you want you can check what is dc2 to dpg2 this is the equation substitute pg2 here so that again you will get lambda so same value you are going to get here yeah, the same lambda value you are going to get irrespective of the plants the incremental fuel cost you are going to get the same here here yeah. now after getting this lambda value now you substitute this is the cost equation i am repeating it substitute pg1 here so you will get the cost so pg1 is 88.89 88.89 square so when you solve this one you are going to get 11577 rupees per hour you see the unit cost is rupees per hour incremental fuel cost is rupees per megawatt hour clear so this you got it now similarly you find out c2 cost of plant 2 generation this is the equation c2 that has been given substitute pg whatever you are getting it here so substitute the values you will get c2 this is your question 1 question 2 we will solve it tomorrow's class fine tomorrow's class we will solve it this is the cost of individual generation so you can check these values and any uh, thing uh, mistake is there in the calculated values so you can inform me tomorrow clear okay thank you one and all take care bye